every day it's like what is the internet going to dream up today in the realm of skincare skincare trends that pop off i don't even know or understand why it is they get so much traction they're so bizarre they're so over the top it's like no one is actually doing these things in real life it's just for entertainment purposes only then it influences someone nonetheless and they end up with a skin problem but one trend one trend at least something that is highly searched on google is skin minimalism and that that is something i can get behind in today's video, we're going to be breaking down what exactly is skin minimalism, what all does it entail, do you have to buy anything, spoiler alert, probably not, and what are the advantages, when might it not be appropriate, all of the things. So what exactly is skin minimalism? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It is having a skincare routine with minimal products, a minimal number of products, just the essentials, and importantly, staying consistent with those and not jumping around from product to product every two two or three weeks or shoot in some people's cases every other day. Skin minimalism is a simplified skincare approach using fewer and well-chosen products. It's all about intentionality, not excess. And I think it's become popular because honestly, people are fed up with over-the-top routines, feeling the pressure that they need to add this, always wondering how should I layer this? Those 10, 11, 15 step routines, they end up in most cases leading to more problems than benefits. There's also a shift towards people wanting to cut back on their purchases and not generate as much waste. The more products you make your way through, the more bottles that you have to get rid of. Let's face it too, not everyone finishes all of these products. They end up going to waste. If people want skincare routines that are straightforward, easy to follow. They don't need seven different tutorials on how to execute it. There's several reasons why skin minimalism can be very effective, especially, especially when done the right way. Number one, it's great for sensitive skin or when you have developed, I should say, the symptoms of sensitivity, burning, stinging, redness, dryness, peeling, flaking skin. Your skin seems reactive, like it gets red and irritated. You break out in more pimples when you put products on. Fewer products, fewer potential irritants. It really allows your skin the time necessary to repair the barrier, to heal, and to keep things inside that are supposed to be there and keep stuff out that's not supposed to get in. Serial product application, it starts to become a means to an end, and the end is an impaired skin barrier. More products, eventually they end up compromising barrier integrity. Number two benefit of skin minimalism, it actually can be a game changer for acne prone skin. Skin that is prone to getting pimples, blackheads, whiteheads, sticking to a simple consistent routine really can support the needs of acne prone skin, especially when paired alongside a dermatologist treatments because a minimal skincare routine will help support the needs of the skin barrier without taxing it even further, which is really important because a lot of people who deal with acne breakouts don't realize that in many cases, they actually have an impaired skin barrier. Yeah, they're oily, but the barrier is at baseline of suboptimal integrity and is just more inclined to lose water, to become flaky, irritated, especially with topical acne medications, which often are irritating. If you have a minimal skincare routine, it really can support the needs of the skin barrier to help you tolerate those topicals much better. However, if you have this over the top routine that is further adding fuel to the skin barrier, damaging dryness, irritation, peeling, ugh, breakouts that seem to be getting worse, firestorm that is purging as many people refer to it, and that is the acne getting a little bit worse in the beginning. Yeah, it really can, really can take you several steps back and in many cases cause not only more breakouts, but lead the skin to heal with hyperpigmentation or redness. It's a lot more stubborn to fade. Too many products, especially harsh ones, can trigger breakouts. So a strip back routine really allows your skin to recalibrate, rebalance, and focus on responding to the topical medications as prescribed. One of the other reasons I like a minimal skincare routine is it requires less guesswork. Not only less guesswork, but in most cases, less money spent. And that makes skincare more accessible and more doable. People lead really busy lives these days. They don't have time to be doing these over-the-top multi-step routines. They may be motivated, inspired to do them, invest a lot of money in all of these products only to bail on the vast majority of them after a couple of days because they just don't have the time and motivation will decline to keep up with these over-the-top routines. Which brings me to the fourth advantage of skin minimalism and that is consistency. Staying consistent is much, much easier 
when you have a manageable, simple routine. When it comes to your skin, consistency is everything. Most skincare ingredients take time to work, four, six weeks usually, in order to really begin to see a noticeable improvement in certain skin concerns. Whether you're using retinoids, exfoliating acids, niacinamide, it takes time and it takes consistency. It takes patience. So a simpler routine is just easier to stick with day after day after day. You just kind of go on autopilot as long as it's working for you and you can move on with your life. It really allows your skin the time necessary to actually respond to the skincare products that you're using. Remember, your skin is a barrier. It works to keep stuff out. It's not meant to be fighting against 12 different products all day, every day. And the fifth reason to say yes to skin minimalism, your skin barrier, it will thank you. When your skin barrier is impaired due to using too many products, it sets off a cascade of events that leads to more irritation and more skin problems, which you might end up going on TikTok, looking for videos on how to fix those problems, buying more products, and it's just this vicious cycle. Taking a step back, doing a skincare product reboot, keeping things really minimal, it really can change the trajectory of your skin health, not to mention take a lot of stress off of your plate. Now, we're gonna talk about what a minimal skincare routine looks like, but what are some situations where skin minimalism might not quite fit? Well, there really is no situation where you need to use 10, 12 different skincare products. No, not at all. And skin minimalism may not be enjoyable for everyone. Some people love doing these complex skincare routines using multiple different products. Their skin has no issue doing that. It's enjoyable. It brings them a lot of happiness, helps them to relax and to unwind. So for those people, skin minimalism is probably something that sounds really boring, like it's stripping them of the joy in their life. And therefore, hey, if it's not broken, don't try and fix it. But there are some times when a less is more approach, eh, you gotta proceed with caution, it may not quite cut it. If you have a complex skin condition like melasma, cystic acne, or rosacea, you might need targeted treatments, which are going to be prescribed by your dermatologist. Sometimes these targeted treatments come in different creams, different topicals that you have to use one after the other after the other. Even then, we know firsthand that the more topical treatments we prescribe a patient, the less likely they are to comply with them. We know that that negatively impacts the likelihood of success. Yes, the combination of multiple active medications together might optimally address the skin concern. However, it's going to be much better to just use one topical medication that the patient actually can stick with using than to prescribe three that they bail on using after a couple of days because it's too much to keep up with. Then it's gonna fail and you would have been better off just sticking to one active medication. Sometimes in dermatology, we start out with one topical medication, give the patient time to get used to it, to see how their skin responds to it. And if the needle is not moving forward, rather than cutting out that topical medication, in many cases, another one will be added to get it another arm. And the thing about it is, because we know that the more prescriptions that we give a patient to apply to the skin, the less likely they are to use them. That actually is something that the pharmaceutical industry attempts to address. And that's why you see prescription topicals that have multiple active drugs in them. For example, Epiduo is Adapalene and Benzoyl Peroxide. It's not so much that the Epiduo itself is superior to using those ingredients separately. The superiority of Epiduo solely boils down to the fact that the patient is more likely to stick with and use Epiduo because it is one topical as opposed to two topicals. Compliance goes down for every topical you add to the regimen. Now, when it comes to anti-aging concerns, you might want to add in some specific active ingredients that are outside of the minimal routine, such as a topical retinoid. A topical retinoid can be a game changer, but the topical retinoid may not be quite moisturizing enough and you may need, well, a moisturizer, which is part of a basic skincare routine for most people. Another issue that can come up with skin minimalism is using the wrong minimal products. Some people, for example, might favor just using a micellar water to wash their face when really they would benefit from a double cleanse to remove their makeup, their cosmetics, and that entails using an oilier balm or cleansing oil first to break it all up and then washing their face with a mild cleanser. Other people might view skin minimalism as just kind of going into their kitchen and smearing 
smearing some coconut or olive oil on the skin. And I advise against that. Stick to actual formulated skincare products that contain preservatives to keep the products safe and stable and effective. Also, some people interpret skin minimalism as a less is more approach, which it is, but they take it to an extreme. For example, there was a gal trending on TikTok, of course, going viral claiming that she was doing this caveman method of putting nothing, nothing on her face. And that can lead to a condition known as dermatitis neglecta, where you get a buildup of basically dead skin cell debris uh, that leads to this kind of cornflake-like appearance on the surface of the skin. Something that you might encounter in uh, nursing homes, for example, and older adult patients on areas of the body where it becomes more difficult in older age to reach, to clean, and you might find this. But if somebody decides they're not gonna put anything, including water, on their face for weeks and weeks at a time, like a caveman, which I don't know, I'm sure if the caveman could come back in time, they would side eye a lot of this and be like, um, yeah, we rub stuff on our face, okay? Skin minimalism is about having a routine that contains a minimal number of products to support healthy skin, but it's not about skin neglect. Also, when it comes to skin minimalism, that is not an excuse to skimp on your sunscreen. One of the biggest reasons why sunscreen fails, people do not apply it and people do not apply enough of it. Don't wanna go minimal when it comes to the amount of sunscreen that you put on. Less is not more in that case, and that is for certain. So what exactly does an effective skin minimalism routine look like? The basics, cleanse, moisturize, sunscreen. Those are the three products that you need. Here's the catch. Some people don't even need a moisturizer. Yeah, there are people out there, their skin barrier is doing just fine. Their transepidermal water loss is not above and beyond just the bare minimum. They're able to retain moisture in the skin beautifully. They've never put on a moisturizer in their lives. They have no need for it. Plus, if they get on board with sunscreen, that alone might be all the moisturizing that they need because sunscreens are moisturizers. They're in a moisturizing base. They will help reduce water loss even further. Plus, when you protect your skin from the sun regularly, you are also supporting the needs of the skin barrier directly by applying a moisturizer, reducing transepidermal water loss, allowing for barrier recovery. And also you are helping to interrupt UV mediated damage to the skin barrier. So you get a two for one just by putting sunscreen on your face every day. So some people don't even necessarily need to use a moisturizer. They can get by with that degree of a minimal routine. What might a typical skincare minimalism routine look like? AM routine would be get up, wash your face, apply a moisturizer, apply sunscreen. Then at night, you wash your face with the cleanser and you apply a moisturizer. That's it, three products. But it gets even better. When we talk about the morning routine, I said you can cleanse your face in the morning. For a lot of people, for a lot of people, that's not necessary. People who benefit from washing their face when they wake up in the morning, mostly are people who have very oily skin. Their skin makes a lot of sebum, a lot of oil. They wash their face at night as everyone should, in my opinion, to remove dirt, oil, cosmetics, pollutant residue, etc. They did that. They didn't roll around in the mud all night. They didn't sleep in a barrel of hay, but they made a lot of oil. And that oil on the surface of the skin can break down, can oxidize throughout the day, cause irritation or problems. They really benefit from washing their face in the morning. Some people just like it and feel weird if they don't do it and it doesn't cause them any problems. However, for other people, not only is washing the face in the morning not necessary, but it could actually help your skin out even more to skip the morning cleanse routine. And that's gonna be people who have rosacea, a very sensitive skin where products burn and sting. Cutting down on the number of times that you expose the skin to water and surfactants in the form of a cleanser can really help out a lot. Even in those situations though, I do not, I do not recommend completely abandoning cleansing the face, <laughs> okay? You still should wash your face at the end of the day with a mild cleanser. Again, to remove all of that stuff from the day that does ultimately also compromise barrier integrity. But in other words, some people actually can just wake up in the morning and put sunscreen on and go. Yeah, that's it. 
that is it. Um, I've done it before myself and it works just fine. Keep in mind, even though skincare has been popular in countries around the world for a long time, a long time is not forever and it hasn't always been this way, that's for sure. Most of us growing up in the 80s, the 90s, and even earlier, we don't have memories of this kind of stuff, of these over-the-top routines. It just didn't exist and our faces didn't fall off. <laughs> so to suddenly come on and say things like everyone over the age of 45 needs to use an exfoliant every Tuesday and Thursday night. Sit down, sit down. Not everyone needs to do that, okay? It can be beneficial, might even be beneficial to do it more frequently for some, but it is not a requirement. It is not, a facial skin does not fall off when that doesn't happen. And the thing about this simple routine is people will be like, well, what about my toner? What about my serum? What about my essence? What about my exfoliant? The thing about the basic routine is that you can kind of maximize it by choosing a moisturizer that has one or two ingredients in it that are going to support your skin needs that are sort of actives, whether it be an alpha hydroxy acid for moisture retention and exfoliating away dry rough skin texture, whether it be salicylic acid for exfoliating the pore, whether it be niacinamide to calm down redness, dark spots, the moisture barrier, fight off against oxidative stress, reduce glycation in the skin, ultimately helping skin yellowing. And you've got an active ingredient there already in a moisturizer. Also, some of these things can be found in sunscreens. Also, just doing the simple skincare routine, the, the minimal skincare routine, at the end of the day, it leads to a significantly reduced need for exfoliation in many cases because consistent cleansing is exfoliating. Consistent moisturizing, helping to optimize water content in the skin, helps your skin naturally exfoliate, not be so slow and stuck. So once water content gets optimized, Optimized, things move along a lot more efficiently. Less buildup of dry skin that you then need to come in and chemically or mechanically exfoliate. And the sun protection piece as well supports the needs of the skin barrier. Again, optimizing water content, supporting better turnover of the skin barrier as the enzymes that do that require water to function. And it really makes a huge difference. Not to mention the sun protective properties help to reduce UV induced barrier damage. Ultimately, all of those things come together to long-term with consistent use help reduce the needs for exfoliation in many cases. Not everyone, but in many cases. And, and as I kind of suggested, a lot of the exfoliants can be incorporated into moisturizers so you get a two for one. So let's wrap this all up. Skin minimalism, it's not just a trend, although they gave it a trendy name, skin minimalism, but it works because it can help reduce irritation, make the approach to skincare a lot more sustainable, doable, and affordable, less waste, but it's not necessarily for everyone per se, although I maintain that no one, no one has to do an over-the-top skincare routine. That is not a requirement. And importantly, skin minimalism is not, is not skin neglect. All right, you guys, let me know in the comments, what do you think about skin minimalism? I'm sure a lot of you guys already do this. If you're looking to get started with a basic skincare routine, you're just looking for some affordable cleansers, moisturizers, sunscreens, I will put links to recommendations in in the description box and a pinned comment of my go-to recs. But if you already have something that works, no need to change it up. If it's not broken, don't try and fix it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.